Secret Weapons, and today we're taking a look at the Joshua Ambient Echo by MXR. We have talked a lot on this channel over the last year and showcased a series of delays and reverbs that kind of beg the question, where is the balance between simplicity and complexity, between feature set and ease of use when it comes to delays and reverbs, and what is it that you as a player want and value in that dichotomy? Some people want a device that is purely plug and play, while others need kind of that myriad feature set, that wealth of options that lets them dial in exactly the version of the delay or the reverb that they want, that they have in their head. And from time to time, we come across a device that really bridges that gap pretty effectively. Things that will give you a lot of flexibility without feeling like they are uh, too complicated to really plug and play, that don't feel like they require a manual deep dive in order to get some good sounds out of the box. And I have to say that the Joshua by MXR is a great example of that kind of device. So much so that I probably used this thing for a couple of weeks before realizing that there were any submenu controls on this device whatsoever. But before we go too far down that rabbit hole, let's talk about what Joshua is and what it sets out to achieve for your pedal board. The Joshua is, at its core, an ambient echo. It is effectively one or two delay lines with separate subdivisions with the ability to add modulation to those repeats, the ability to add octaves up and down and two octaves up to the repeats, as well as the ability to add a reverb to the repeats as well. This is effectively, as the name would infer, uh, a whole rack of digital delay gear emulating one of the most famous mononym guitar players of all time. Assuming the the at the start of his name doesn't make it not a mononym. But for all of the tonal and sonic complexity that a rig like that would bring to the table, the Joshua really simplifies things down to a very straightforward and approachable kind of control scheme. You have your subdivision, your mix, and your regeneration. Up top you have your delay time, your modulation control, and your voice control, which is going to be what mixes in those octaves on the repeats. Up top, you have two buttons, a button that turns on the second delay line uh, and a trails button that will basically allow you to bypass the pedal without killing the trails as they continue to fade away. On the right side of the pedal, you have your input and on the left side, you have your output and your control input that can be used for an expression controller, which will basically let you set a heel position and a toe position of two entirely different sets of control parameters for this thing, as well as a tap tempo for external tap. And please note, you can also press and hold the foot switch to temporarily switch that uh, bypass switch into a tap tempo as well. And if that's where things ended with the Joshua, you would see me sitting here talking about the fact that this is a rock solid mono dual delay that sounds great for adding octaves and space in your kind of like mono amp facing pedal board solution. However, that is not where this thing ends. The Echo 2 and the Trails button both can be used to access two different sets of subparameters across every single one of the controls on this thing, which means every single control can do three different things depending on what you are trying to accomplish 
with this delay. And this thing is in stereo in two different formats. You have the ability to run a TRS jack out of the output for kind of discrete stereo out of your output jack, or you can flip a switch on this, uh, this tiny little hole right here and use your control jack as a second output instead, basically allowing you to pick between a TRS output jack or two mono output jacks. And in either situation there, Echo 2 and Echo 1 pan left and right for massive, wide, multi-tap, rhythmic complexity. And that's still just the tip of the iceberg. Those secondary controls allow you to do everything from change the separate divisions of your left and right delay lines, uh, add a high cut to the delay lines for those kind of like octave up sounds to kind of make them a little bit warmer, a little bit more mellow sounding. You can change the depth and the rate of the modulation independently of one another. You can change the regeneration rates of your left and right delay lines separately from one another if you want to. You can also mix in a reverb on the repeats themselves as well as set the decay length of that reverb. Uh, and on top of all of that, you also have a built-in compressor on those delay repeats allowing you to kind of set your generation to infinite and then control how kind of like loud that infinite repeat will get but it also allows you to kind of create a lot of either rhythmic consistency by really kind of like lowering the threshold using one of those secondary controls or leave it wide open for much more kind of like organic uh, responsive delayed taps all of that in this size of an enclosure. It's kind of nuts, if we're being honest. This thing can do so many things. I'm actually refilming a huge chunk of this video, having already done most of my sound samples, because in my kind of like further experimentation, in my further delving into the manual, I just realized that there was so much more to cover than we initially had realized, because like I said, I used this thing for probably a month, not even realizing that any of those subparameters existed, let alone two full sets to dig into. So let's stop talking about it. Let's get this thing back on our pedal board and get through our sound samples. We're going to break things up pretty cleanly where we are going to start by taking a look at the delay kind of at its base level with everything kind of reset to factory settings. And then we'll start to dig into all of those sub menu control parameters to let this thing be exactly what you want it to be. As always, before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing my music man, St. Vincent Goldie, into the Asabi Overdrive and Distortion by Jackson Audio, the Ruby Top Boost Amplifier, the Joshua Ambient Echo, and the Aux Stomp. And then from there, we go to our DAW, which is Universal Audio's Luna, where we are setting level for the guitar with a 1073, and then mixing and mastering with ATR tape, Neve Summing, and the SSL G-Bus compressor. Our dry tone sounds like this. <laughs> So we have the Joshua kind of fully factory reset right now. So all of the submenu parameters are back to normal. We are wired up in mono. Uh, we're gonna use this setup to go ahead and walk through the base level controls really quickly. And then we will kind of showcase how to set this thing up for stereo and get into the more interesting ambient and esoteric sides of the Joshua. So let's give the kind of basic control scheme a listen. The manual recommends starting things off in this kind of configuration with voice and modulation completely out and everything else at noon. So let's use that as our starting point. As you can hear, a very pristine, kind of like vintage digital. can be stretched out pretty long. Thank you. 
an interesting thing about the Joshua is the fact that the delay and the division are kind of like always linked. So here at this kind of like minimum delay time, you have like borderline comb filtering modulation if you bring in that modulation control. But you're only hearing it that way because we are at that eighth note. If you take that quarter note division instead, suddenly your minimum delay time gets a little bit longer. which can open up some really interesting possibilities. Like I said, we have a myriad of subdivisions here. You have everything from your eighth note, uh, and we're going to kind of like tap those in by pressing and holding the center switch, and then tapping that in. Your dotted eighth, your classic. As well as some cool stuff like your triplets. Take that regeneration up. As well as a dual delay, even in your kind of like solo delay mode. Yeah, super cool. Like I said, regeneration will kind of run very, very far. And then it is worth noting that this mix control is going to be your uh, your your analog uh, dry through pedal with a wet mix control. So this is going to control your wet effect only, not your dry tone. Modulation is going to increase the amount of modulation applied to the repeats. Like we said, uh, there is a kind of like sub control for this for your speed, but for now we are leaving everything as it kind of stands on the surface of the pedal. Thank you. 
at really severe sound uh, speeds, it actually becomes really cool as a vibrato. And then of course, you have this voice control, which adds three separate voicings to the repeats, an octave down, an octave up, and two octaves up. Which can be used pretty subtly. or at maximum settings really, really beautifully. Which can be really, really cool for just like absolutely massive kind of like orchestral swells. And for context, that's what this actually sounds like. Add a little bit of modulation in there for some swim. Yeah, it's pretty beautiful. Um, like I said, you also have access to a secondary delay repeat that is accessible uh, via this button up here that by default is going to be a quarter note. So we've got our um, one, two, three, four. We have our eighth note right now. Then we can add that in. Go to a dotted eighth because that'll be a little bit more evident. Really handy stuff. as well as trails. And that is the basic functionality of the Joshua. And like I said, even at this point, you've already got a pretty 
robust and impressive set of controls here. Uh, like even just this sound as a mono delay, not digging into anything. within one pedal, which is pretty rad. But let's expand this thing out, and let's start by putting this thing into stereo operation. So in order to operate this thing in stereo, like we said earlier, you can either make use of this control port as a second TRS or TS mono output up to your kind of like next stereo capable device and or a second amplifier or whatever other source you're using. We, however, are going to make use of this TRS to dual TS patch cable that I have right here. So you have a TRS jack on one side, you have your uh, ring tip and sleeve here, and then on the other side you only have uh, tip and sleeve. So these are going to both operate as kind of mono ends to the two stereo inputs on the aux stomp, whereas this is going to take left and right information on the tip and the ring for the uh, output of the Joshua. So as you can see, we have now kind of like wired this up with the TRS jack on uh, the output of the Joshua and the two different TS cables headed into the input on the aux stomp, the left and right inputs. Now, if we listen to our guitar, you're going to hear something incorrect. <laughs> We are only getting our information on the left channel, and that is because we are sending in the mono input and then sending out of the Joshua in this bypass state over just the tip. So it is going to only the left input of the aux. If I engage the pedal, you will notice we are now hearing my guitar in mono, a kind of center channel, but we're only going to get the delay on the left side. And in order to fix this, what we have to do is press and hold delay number two, and then turn the uh, voice control all the way clockwise, allowing us to now operate in bypass. Our guitar in mono headed down both paths, as well as turning the delay back on. And you may notice that we're still getting that delay on the right channel, on the left channel only, and that's because our secondary delay is now operating on the right channel as well. So now you have access to that kind of quarter note and whatever other delay line you want kind of spread across your stereo image. You can still get like a proper uh, mono sounding delay. by just setting the two divisions as the same or change that left that left channel to be a different subdivision so we can have now like and suddenly you have this giant massive beautiful stereo image here let's grab that that multi-tap for the left channel to get something really rhythmically interesting and complex. And then go back to those swells, add a little bit of modulation, a ton of that voice, and crank that regen. And now let's go back to exactly what we were doing earlier. Just huge stereo image now, which is so very, very cool. 
Okay, let's reset to kind of like our more standard delay operating procedure like we had earlier in the video, but making use of both delay lines now. And let's walk through some of the additional submenu controls that the Joshua is capable of doing to really fine tune your delay experience. There's some really basic kind of just like visual stuff you can do, like whether you want these lights to kind of fade up and down the way they are right now, or whether you want them to flash hard. So you can leave them as that kind of like fading thing with clockwise by holding that echo too, or by going the other direction, you can give them a more kind of like hard flashing experience, which will basically allow you to kind of like see which one is kind of tapping as a quarter note and which one is tapping as a kind of like more interesting, complicated sub, uh, like sub delay, uh, subdivision. So you can, you can see the difference in, uh, flash rates going right now. Uh, I'm a bigger fan of those kind of like soft flashes because I'm not that worried about it. Uh, additionally, you can also set kind of like whatever your master tap tempo is, uh, assigned over here by pressing and holding this and turning that all the way clockwise as well. And so now that will flash whatever your kind of like kind of global tap tempo is, whatever you've tapped into the device, that'll be represented here. And then your two subdivisions will, will be represented here and here. So you can have a lot of visual information going on very, very easily. And we're going to leave that engaged for the remainder of the video. I alluded to the fact that there is in fact a reverb in this thing as well, applied solely to the repeats of the uh, of the delay taps in this pedal. And so let's take a look at that now. As we listen here. You're hearing very kind of dry standard delay taps. Uh, obviously letting things ring out will give you a lot of ambience because that's the nature of like a good stereo delay. However, um, by pressing and holding submenu controls on regeneration and mix, you can bring in some additional reverb. For, for accessing your reverb, you're going to use the trails button. Uh, pressing and holding trails and moving the mix control is going to introduce the, uh, the reverb mix. So now you can hear a little bit of like a splashy like room reverb applied to the repeats. And then you can kind of shorten that, that decay up. Or turn it into something really truly ambient. or something a little bit more in the center between those two things. It's just a nice little bit of like added splash and kind of gentleness to the sound. Let's take that reverb back out by pressing and holding trails and taking mix and regeneration back down. I guess you don't actually have to do anything with the regeneration. We're just going to take the mix back down to zero. Get our dry delay repeats back. So let's take a look at our modulation. By default, the modulation control will increase the kind of rate and depth as you turn it up. But by pressing and holding trails and adjusting that modulation control, you can set kind of like a custom speed of the modulation and then your modulation control will become depth instead. So let's go ahead, press and hold and set a nice like slow modulation rate. Let's go to a mono delay really quick.
and you can set your, your speed separately. Slower modulation speeds become really, really great in those stereo fields because the, uh, the modulation is, as best I can tell, is uh, applied before the delay itself. So the delay is not fed into a stereo modulation engine. Rather, the modulation is applied to each of the echoes uh, kind of ahead of time, so you will hear them rise and fall at different rates. Great for creating those like really beautiful, slow shimmer sounding uh, choruses. And if you want to do that, that reverb thing or the uh, the chorusing thing that we were talking about earlier. you to more more kind of like carefully fine-tune what you are trying to get out of that modulation engine uh, which is really really wonderful moving back to a more conventional sounding ambient delay We've talked a lot about in this video so far the idea that this is like a pretty pristine sounding kind of vintage digital style delay. But as you apply those kind of like octaves, the high octaves can get a little bit kind of like aggressive. I want to shout out MXR for not putting the pitch shifting in the feedback loop. I'm not a big fan of that kind of like runaway regenerative octaves. I really love a non-cascading octave and this is non-cascading and I love it. But you can also smooth that out even more uh, with the addition of a high cut control in this thing. So we pressed the Echo 2 and moved this control to kind of activate our stereo image. We can now press on the uh, Trails one instead and dial in some high cuts. Let's turn it up so we can hear them get like murkier as they fade. Dial that back so they can kind of like drift a little bit longer. So obviously with all those settings with no high cut being applied, but then we can start to kind of like let those darken as they degrade. which even without the pitch shifting can just be really great for those big, slow moving, uh, kind of like ambient delays.
I also really like it for creating a more kind of like dark and out of the way uh, delay for more kind of like aggressive rock and roll parts. So if you want, uh, you know, if you've got it wide open and you bring in something high gain like this, uh, a sabi. cut out a lot of that and actually get more delay back in your sound without having to like lose track of what you're playing. bit of extra added drama which is quite nice let's get back on track so far we've been doing everything with that kind of like consistency of a quarter note subdivision on the right channel with the echo to left channel being able to kind of like jump between various uh, uh, different subdivisions but it does not have to be that way um, By pressing and holding echo two and adjusting this division control over here, you can actually assign any subdivision to that secondary echo that you want. So now they are both a, uh, a quarter note or an eighth note. Or if you wanna get really weird with things, you can apply uh, a, a triplet eighth note to one delay line. Let's leave that one as a uh, triplet eighth, and then add that uh, dotted eighth plus eighth note to the other one. And so now we have. is so cool especially once again if we go back to that that really crazy massive like volume swell style thing the additional kind of like swirling that is applied to more kind of complicated sets of subdivisions can really create a, a really beautiful version of that orchestral string thing It's super rad. Okay, let's reset that main delay back to an, a uh, quarter note and reset back to an eighth note. So you can also make further adjustments to that echo two separate from echo one. By pressing and holding uh, echo two and adjusting regen or mix, you can actually change the regeneration rate and the mix of that echo separately from echo number one. Uh, in a stereo image, that stuff isn't super useful in my opinion because it just makes things sound off kilter. But in a mono environment, you might want more of one subdivision than the other one, or for that one to kind of like fade longer or fade faster uh, than your other subdivision. Say you want kind of short bursts of 
rhythmic complexity with a dotted or with an eighth note triplet or that kind of like dual delay. Uh, but then you want the kind of like long decay of a reliable quarter note or whatever. You can use separate regeneration and mix controls to accomplish that with the submenu controls using that echo two. And the final thing to kind of mess with here is there is a built-in compressor in this thing that will kind of control some level stuff for the delay. Uh, by default, the division uh, submenu for trails sets it at noon, but you can actually lower it down if you want that kind of like regeneration stuff to kind of feel a little bit more constrained or a little bit more like airy. Compressor is very, very subtle, but can be useful for, like I said earlier, kind of really dialing in and like laying claim to those kind of. Let's close out by taking a look at this control port. Like we said, you can use a external tap to set your tap tempo versus what we've been doing in this video, which is pressing and holding and then tapping in our delay times. But the other thing you can do with it is use this, uh, like an expression pedal, I'm using a Dunlop Mini Volume X, uh, to set a heel position and a toe position for two different entire sets of controls here. So what we wanna do to finish this out is to kind of showcase how you can have two different sets of parameters for two very different sounds in the heel position and the toe position. So I'm gonna set it to heel, I'm gonna go ahead and dial in a more kind of conventional, restrained sounding uh, delay, slower regen. Let's go ahead and high cut down some of our repeats. Uh, none of the reverb, a little bit of modulation, and definitely none of the voice. So we now have... <laughs> We'll give it a little bit more, cut some more of that high. And then for our toe position, let's go ahead, bring in all of that, everything, a ton of reverb, really long, all the voice stuff, a little bit more modulation, and a ton of regeneration. So now we have... Oh, and let's dial back that that high cut so we get all of the all of the, like the long fading repeats. Thank mm -hmm. you. 